Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you'd like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. Today, I'm about to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a while now, and that is uh, an updated philodendron collection video, just where I show you all of the plants that are in the philodendron genus that are in my collection. It's kind of self-explanatory. I probably didn't have to explain that. I think I have 24 or 25, which is a lot more, <laughs> almost 10 more than what I had the last time I made a video like this. And that was probably like a year and a half ago. So we are very much due for an update. I don't know if I'm ready to commit to saying that philodendron is my favorite genus, but it's definitely up there. But I figured I'll just share with you each species that I happen to have and kind of the stories behind them, my experiences with them. And I'll also try to keep it brief because, wow, this is gonna be a doozy of a video if I spend five minutes talking about each plant. Let's not do that. And also I'm hoping to go in roughly the order in which I got each plant because I think that that's kind of fun to see the evolution of my philodendron collection over the years. So this is the first one on my list. It's the philodendron heteraceum. And don't mind the fact that she's thirsty. I literally watered her today. So she's a little bit droopy as she's slurping up that water. <laughs> That I, I, I should never do that again. Like I said, this is the philodendron heteraceum or Hartley philodendron or philodendron cordatum or philodendron scandens. Like these are all very common terms for this plant, but it's probably like your most generic philodendron out there. It's a trailing philodendron with heart shaped leaves and then they're just green leaves and very, very beautiful. This one's quite long and lush and this is a plant that I always recommend for beginners. As you can see, it's quite vocal. Uh, I would say like this isn't even extreme in terms of thirst, but you know, it just, it's maybe a day past when I probably should have watered it, technically speaking. And it already is just like a little bit wilty. You can tell the leaves curl in ever so slightly, but it'll bounce back, honestly, without a concern. It's a very fast grower and it's just beautiful the way that it trails. I really think that sometimes this plant is a little bit underrated because people will go for like the flashier, showier plants. But this truly can change the vibe of your home, I think. I'm pretty sure I picked this up at Home Depot and I split it in half because it was like a big basket and boy has this plant gone through the beating of me being a beginner plant parent and not knowing what i was doing like this plant has gone through miracle grow soil and has survived it's gone through underwatering overwatering the whole nine it's endured a lot and it also can do surprisingly well in lower light of course if it is in lower light it's not going to grow as fast and the leaves will be pretty small since it's been in higher light the leaves have gotten bigger but yeah, generally speaking, I love this plant. I'm fairly certain the next plant I got after that was the philodendron micans, which is actually another philodendron heteraceum variety. I believe it's actually classified like philodendron heteraceum heteraceum, but colloquially this is known as a philodendron micans. And this plant is beautiful. It's very much like the philodendron heteraceum from earlier, except the leaves are velvety. Can you see that? And they like kind of have that gorgeous soft sheen to them. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. And the undersides of the leaves are a little bit more purpley red. And yeah, I'm obsessed with this plant. I've always loved this plant. Definitely at a distance, it can be a little bit more understated, but then as you get closer to the plant and you realize just those beautiful characteristics that it has, you know, you'll just fall in love. <laughs> Very much like the philodendron heteraceum from earlier, this plant, the philodendron micans, has endured a lot from me and, uh, it survived in a fairly low light situation the entire time that I've owned it. I think honestly, it would probably thrive even more if I were more generous with the amount of light that I was giving it. But honestly, like it's done just fine. I've propagated it, oh, so many times at this point. I've given pots of this to my friends that I've propagated from this plant and it's just kept on growing and thriving. And you know, it's very full and lush on top, which I'm super grateful for. I'm pretty sure I got two of this plant and I potted them together, which is part of the reason that it's such a full plant on top. I love it. It's another one that I recommend to my friends. If they want something that's like a little bit less basic than just 
the green version, but you know, still very easy to take care of and still very beautiful. Although there are definitely a few like dead leaves in here that I have not removed in some time. <laughs> okay, the next one is another philodendron and aresium. I'm telling you we're going in order, so it's gonna be a little bit boring at first, I guess, but this is a philodendron Brazil, which is another cultivar of philodendron and I believe. And much like the other two that I just talked about, this is just ridiculously easy. This one's also very long. Um, I'd say this one is actually the most prolific grower of all of my philodendron heteresum varieties. Although, I mean, I haven't propagated it quite as much, but I have a few times. Yeah, look at that. My goodness. I have to trim this plant pretty frequently because it starts hitting the ground. Or one of my children will just like rip a piece off of it if it gets too close and within arm's reach, which actually happened recently. Uh, like a whole foot of this plant got ripped off and I just went ahead and propagated it and I'll just give it to a friend because this is a really good plant to give to your beginner plant parent friends. I actually own two others of this. I really like that when it's in higher light, I mean, right now it has variegation, but it's very basic, like it's green and then it has kind of a more lime green or yellowish tint to it. But one of the things that I really love about this plant is that when you put it in higher light, the petioles and stems will start getting kind of more peachy or orange and the leaves will start getting a deeper orange color or peachy color and I am obsessed with how that looks. This one is in a darker corner in my house so it still grows really well clearly but it just doesn't have that striking orange color or pinkish color. Yeah I adore this plant. I always will. It'll always be one of my favorites for sure. Okay, so then after getting three trailing philodendron, I went ahead and got like my first self-heading philodendron. And this was definitely a case of, I saw it at the nursery, it was like $8 and it was like, oh my goodness, I haven't, I don't have that plant. So I'm just gonna buy it. And um, I, I'm not gonna say that I like regret buying it, but it's definitely a plant that I neglect a lot. It's one of the plants in my collection that I just don't pay that much mind to. It's sitting by my coffee bar and I mean it's growing it has new growth uh, right now it's probably it's a little bit on the thirsty side and it, I never really rotate it as you can tell it kind of grows in the direction of the feeble amount of light that it gets did I even say what this was this is a philodendron mia <laughs> I don't think I even said what it was. But honestly, in spite of that, this plant has pressed on. It hasn't gotten remarkably larger than it was when I first got it. You know, it's just, it has plain green leaves. It's a nice plant to look at, if anything. It's kind of like a piece of art, is like the way that I describe it, where, you know, it's kind of sculptural. It's a little spot of green by my coffee bar where, you know, I probably wouldn't put a nicer plant than this or a plant that I care about because it doesn't get that much light and it tends to get pretty neglected but it's like decoration you put it there and it's like oh that's a nice green compliment but it's not eye-catching to the point where it's distracting oh my goodness it suddenly got so dark i think there's a storm brewing the next plant in my collection is actually behind me it's my field of mama so let me get it oh my goodness look at how beautiful this plant is i'm overwhelmed with how stunning this plant is actually like even comparing it to like a year and a half ago from my last philodendron collection video like i'll have to insert some footage of that because wow that's a big difference this is a massive and beautiful plant and there's a new leaf on the way right here oh my goodness the leaves are massive and i'm sure have potential to get like even bigger than they currently are and they've got this silvery variegation to them and of course this plant is a crawler so it's currently crawling along the pot and roots come down from like each node into the soil so yeah it's like creeping on the surface of the soil basically i got this plant maybe a month or two after i started this youtube channel you can hear singing <laughs> My toddler is in the room next door and she's singing yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I got this from a local seller off of Facebook when it was 
significantly smaller than this. And I feel like the first year, six months to a year that I had this plant, it was a little bit more of a roller coaster. It lost a lot of leaves and only had like two or three leaves for a while. I thought it had like spider mites at one point. And I remember just generally feeling super paranoid about this plant and really wanting it to do well because it was like the most expensive plant I had purchased at that point. And actually I think it still might be in like the top five most expensive plants I've ever purchased. <clears throat> uh, this was like at the height of the plant market. So it was, uh, it was a pricey one. But honestly, based on the bead that this plant has grown into, I do think it was worth it. And uh, soon enough, I'm gonna have to propagate this plant because I mean, it's, reaching the edge of this pot and uh, I don't know that I'm gonna find a planter longer than this. I think I have seen some people getting like a second rectangular planter and like letting the plant just kind of hop into another pot but I don't know if I'm willing to do that. It's a little bit extreme but honestly yeah this has to be one of my favorite philodendron period. Like this is my pride and joy plant and I'm just so glad that it's done so well for me. I don't really know that I've done anything special. It gets some direct light in the afternoon, like late afternoon to evening from a west facing window, but it's not like right next to the west facing window. It's pulled back from the window by, I don't know, four or five feet. I fertilize it when I remember to, usually with an organic fertilizer, like once a month. And I try to keep up with the watering. I think it, I only really have to water it like once every two weeks, roughly 10 days to two weeks because there's so much substrate in this rectangular planter. I mean, and it's plastic too. So it, it's not like it dries up super fast. And it's a little bit of a slower grower compared to some of my other philodendrons, but the leaves are so massive, like it makes sense. It takes a lot of energy to produce these leaves. This next plant I actually got at the same time as my philodendron mame, but I don't love it as much as I love the mame. That's my philodendron dark lord. It's not that I have anything against this plant particularly. I actually love the dark lord species and I want this plant to thrive and like look like the dark lords that I admire from afar. But this one in particular has been frustrating for me to say the least. I got it almost two years ago at this point. And this is kind of what I have to show for it. As you can see, I mean, it has a new leaf on the way, but that leaf is definitely gonna get stuck. And um, a lot of the leaves have like ripped I mean like this one, this leaf ripped. Even when I had it in my greenhouse cabinet, the leaves were not thriving that much. So like I'll get like one halfway decent leaf and then the next one will be more stunted. I got it originally as an unrooted top cutting and it took forever to root. And I had high hopes when I was putting it on this wooden pole that like maybe it would be happier climbing, but apparently not. I think it's just slightly happier climbing but like I, I haven't actually like attached another piece of plant velcro so it could also be part of the problem and at this point it's outgrown the pole but just the internal spacing has been so far apart that it's just it's not that satisfying to look at and it's just not growing super nicely. So honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to do this because I had such a hard time rooting this plant originally but I think I do want to cut up this plant completely and just start over and see if it treats me better because I've actually had a really good experience chopping up some of my plants, not all of them, but a lot of the plants that I've chopped up, especially philodendrons, just they've done super well. They've propagated really well and it's like when you start them over, they just do much better, they grow nicer. Especially once I figure out the conditions that the plant likes, you can kind of just have a do-over and you know, all the mistakes that you've made along the way that are evident in the plant, just by looking at it, you can just erase that and start over and I'm very tempted to do that. But I think that the Dark Lord is really cool. The name of the plant in general, the species is super cool. Um, I, I like that the leaves come in more of this kind of amber color and it's very dark and, and lush and beautiful in some ways. Uh, I just, I think I really would love to see those gorgeous mature leaves that it can become. So the next time I grow this plant out, maybe I'll put it up a moss pole in my cabinet and just give it a more favorable position because I've just been exasperated by this plant over the years. You know, we've been through the thick of it. We've been through a lot and I've had glimpses of hope that it kind of just, it didn't really fulfill my hopes and dreams very much. I, I expected to adore this plant. Sadly, it just hasn't fulfilled my expectations, which is fine. Someday, maybe it will fulfill my expectations and like 
unexpectedly enter my favorites list, but as of right now, I kind of view this plant as a project. The next plant is another Philodendron Hedericium variety, and it's the like trailing lemon lime. This is another plant that I've propagated quite a few times, and it is on a darker corner, so it grows, but pretty slowly if I'm being honest. When I was pregnant, this plant did go through a serious period of neglect and it got root rot or rather dry rot because I just wasn't watering it enough. But thankfully it bounced back from that. And I think, I mean, some of the leaves are a little bit on the smaller side because again, it's in a lower light situation. But all things considered, it's a pop of bright, cheery color and I enjoy it. I think it's a, it's a nice plant and I think it would fit well in a lot of collections, especially if you like the neon kind of look. Uh, I definitely prefer prefer this to the neon pothos because in my experience, at least my neon pothos just has never really grown well, but this one has at least grown relatively well. If I'm being honest, I actually just, I literally don't remember buying this plant. I think I just must have blacked out when I bought it. I did, I'm, I know that I got it from Pandy's, which is a local nursery, but like, I just, do I remember buying it? No, not at all. The next plant is Philodendron Silver Sword. And I know these don't really look like that much to speak of, to be quite honest with you. I purchased two very small seedlings off of Etsy and I grew them out and then I propagated them both, like chopped them both completely. So I actually have a number of other propagations still just chilling out in my propagation box. But these were the ones that I potted up for myself. I just went ahead and threw a bunch of propagations into one pot because I was feeling so done. I don't even fully remember doing it. I'm pretty sure I have a video. I filmed myself doing it, but I just don't remember like my whole thought process because you know, this is not the most ideal way to grow silver sword. Ideally, you probably have it going up some sort of a support or a pole, but these are just a bunch of little plants in one pot. And I mean, it is kind of cute. You know, it's not the traditional way to grow the plant. I think for a long time, this plant was admired a lot more than it is now because it's gotten considerably more common and accessible. And now you can find like a really big, beautiful silver sword for like maybe $20 or less than $20, like $15, $10. Either at a big box store or at like a local nursery. I know my local nursery sells these and they're like, they have so many they have like an over stock like a surplus so these guys have gotten so common that i think the appeal to the silver sword has decreased tremendously which is a shame because i really really love this plant just the the silverness of the foliage like, i think there's a lot to love about it but i feel like it's a little bit tricky to grow because the leaves tend to get caught a lot and it's actually a similar problem to the philodendron dark lord and the growth habit can be a little bit frustrating to deal with it's really really pretty really really fun and unique but I think that the appeal of these has gone down in a lot of people's minds, unfortunately, including my own. I, th I think I've been influenced, but also just the fact that this plant did not grow the way that I expected it to and it didn't fulfill my expectations, I think is another part of the problem. But I mean, I have nothing against the plant. I'm still gonna grow it, but you know, it's, it's a little bit of a slower grower for me personally. And when I did have it on a pole, it just did not size up, like the leaves didn't size up or mature the way I wanted them to. And I was like, well, what am I doing wrong? This is my philodendron brantianum. And unfortunately this is like another problem child. I feel like I've had a lot of my problem child philodendron all in a row, but I swear I'm not grouping them that way. It's just, I'm, I'm going in chronological order. So this plant, honestly, I actually featured it recently on a favorites video. I think maybe my June favorites. And I actually really love the way that it's been growing, even though when you look up close, it's not very pretty. Like the new growth is like kind of gnarly to be completely honest with you uh it's not great <laughs> it's not super thriving uh but this plant is a plant that like most people tend to struggle with in particular i feel like trailing philodendron like philodendron hedericium they usually don't have stuck leaves but the philodendron brantianum of all the trailing philodendron out there like it's the one that gets stuck leaves the most and mangled leaves and it just like rips itself apart i think people have theorized that humidity is the problem like if you don't have high enough humidity but i have put this plant in high humidity situations and it still has not done well so also, this plant was battling spider mites, which I think is another contributing factor. So I've since treated it, but I think it still has a few left. So I'm probably going to wash my hands before I move on to the next philodendron after this. I mean, all things considered, if you do look up really close to the plant, 
It's beautiful. It's it's very much like the philodendron mame and it's variegation pattern or like a philodendron sodoroi and like that sort of family. I mean, it's stunning. It just like isn't a super easy grower. It tends to be finicky. Maybe if I had it going up a moss pole in like ideal conditions, it would be nice, but like this is what I have, but it's got character. It's very sculptural and I do love it in this terracotta pot. I think it's really beautiful. Okay, I better start picking up the pace here because this is gonna take a long time. All right, this is another problem, child. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know <laughs> this is a philodendron fuzzy petiole and this is actually the first plant that I'm featuring that has fuzzy petioles today. Since the lighting is getting kind of dark, there are storm clouds that I'm looking at right now. I don't know how well you can see that, but this is a plant that I thought that I would love a lot more than I do. And it's just because it's very crazy, which is not this plant's fault. Honestly, I could probably do better by this plant and like add more support to it. It's difficult to get it in a place where it's not totally unruly. So I originally bought this plant as a much smaller propagation, like off of Facebook. Let me see if I can find the original plant. Okay, right here. There's like one little corner right here that is the original plant. And actually this original plant is growing in a way that's not half bad. Like, look at this newest leaf right here. And obviously fuzzy petiole. So this was the original plant that was like a couple of leaves. It got root rot, so I had to like re-root it, I think. Not the best situation ever, but I did purchase a second plant that like is this kind of crazy unruly one over here and I potted them together. Honestly, like I'm not mad at it. Like it's fun, it's a fun, crazy plant, but uh, one of these days I'm definitely gonna wanna, I don't know what I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna propagate it or I don't know. The way that it grows, it just kind of scrambles everywhere. I don't know how well you can tell that, but like it just, it just goes crazy. It goes where it wants. One thing I will say that I appreciate about this plant is like the undersides of the leaves have an ever so slight, very subtle reddish tint to them that I think is really, really fun. And of course, I'm a fan of fuzzy petioles, but it's not as aggressive as like a philodendron serpens might be. I'm very happy that I have it. I just, sometimes I don't really know what to do with it. <laughs> I don't really know where I would begin to try to like get it more under control, you know? Oh my word, the sun is literally gone. Now let me see if I can adjust the lighting on the camera to compensate. Okay, all right. We're getting, we're getting to happier territory now. So this is my philodendron painted lady. And this is actually a really good example of a plant that, you know, I got it, it wasn't doing so well. And then I chopped it up completely and propagated it. I have multiple of this plant actually, and I'm gonna be selling some of them. But this is the one that I've kind of designated as like my personal plant because I put it on a pole. And okay, I love, the variegation on this plant and and i'm so happy with this because the issue with like leaves getting caught and stuff like that hasn't really been happening very much with this plant in particular i feel like it used to happen a little bit more with the mother plant but for some reason when i chopped it up and propagated it like none of the current plants that i have now struggle with getting their leaves caught and i don't think it's a humidity issue because the conditions haven't really changed so i'm like Okay, whatever, I'll just kind of take it. This one has been loving the moss pole and because of the lighting, I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell at all, but there are some roots in the pole. I know there's there's one in particular right here, but it's like the same color as the moss, so I don't think you can really tell. But <laughs> this plant has really enjoyed going up this moss pole and it's really beautiful. I'm honestly obsessed with I just, it's so nice. It's so nice. And I think I featured a different one of my favorites video for July that I actually intend to sell, but I love the way that that plant has been growing as well. And then I have another one that I recently potted up, maybe in the video that went up just before this one, that I'm also loving. So honestly, I've been so obsessed with the Lindgren Paint Lady lately. And obviously like this is nowhere near how gorgeous it can get as the leaves size up. So I'm hoping that since this is rooting into the moss pole successfully, we're gonna see the leaves size up over time. And I'm really excited to see that. I love that the petioles and the, the stems have a little bit more of a peach tint to them. And this is just, 
an understated, I think probably underrated plant. I know Wild Fern has featured this plant a lot on her channel. I think that it has helped this plant to be more appreciated by the masses perhaps. And this lighting is not as good as I want it to be. And now it's raining, so I'm sorry if you hear <laughs> raindrops and storms. It might be a torrential downpour over here, but at least it's cozy. But yeah, just look at how it's so subtle and gorgeous. And I'm just, I'm in love. This this is another one of my favorite philodendrons, I think. The next plant that I got, I got this one from Groovy Plants. I think Groovy Plants Ranch, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's like down closer to Columbus, Ohio. And it was like a tiny plant when I got it, but this is my philodendron Florida ghost. And I know right now it's not really that much to look at, but that's because I recently chopped this up in a different video. Although there's a new growth point starting, so you know, it'll, it'll get back to its former glory soon enough. And I very well might pot it up with another one of the plants that I've propagated. I have like, oh gosh, three or four entire other Florida ghost plants that I've propagated off of this mother plant. At one point it was as tall as like this bamboo stake right here. So yeah, I've propagated this plant a number of times. It has gotten spider mites once or twice, but you really can't tell when you look at it. And I know right now it doesn't have like the super ghosty leaves that it's known for because all of the leaves currently that it has right now are older leaves on the plant. Um, I haven't gotten a new leaf on it since I chopped it up, but like I said, there's a new growth point right here. But yeah, the newer leaves would come out that more ghosty, creamy white color. I've just generally had a really good experience with this plant. At the moment, it's not one of my favorites just because I recently chopped it up, so it's just like not as beautiful as it was, but I still really like it. I think it definitely has potential to like be a favorite of mine again once it kind of grows and fills back in. As far as like rare plants go, this is definitely one that I recommend even to beginners, especially if you're able to get it in a location that gets like pretty decently high light because I found that the, the ghostiness of the leaf is very dependent on how much light it gets. Um, <laughs> so, this is my philodendron's palmiferum. I literally can't even really fit it into the frame, like, at all. <laughs> this is clearly a massive plant, but this is absolutely one of my favorite plants that I've ever gotten. I actually had a different original plant that I got as a seedling at the same time as the philodendron silver swords. But this particular plant I got, I think after the Florida ghost, I got it at Urban Plant in Cleveland at the same time as I got my Syndapsis pictus exotica. But the other plant I ended up giving away to a friend because I got this one for a really good price. When it was maybe, if we're being generous, like four or five leaves. But this has been one of the plants that has absolutely by far just grown the best for me. <laughs> like, look at the size of these leaves. Look at these fuzzy petioles. Holy moly. And you guys, we have an inflorescence. How and why? I mean, it's a very mature plant at this point, but I am uh, very shocked. And here, let me show you the newest leaf right here. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. I don't really know why it's so happy and why it loves me so much, but it just does. And you know what, I'll take it. I will take it. It has surpassed the length of this bamboo steak officially. And I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So if you guys have suggestions, let me know. I know I could like air layer it. I could do something, I don't know. But I just, I like it where it's at right now and I just want it to stay. That's, that is the hard part about philodendrons. I feel like they're pretty tricky when they get this large and mature. Cause like, this is where you want them to be, but that's at the same time at a certain size, like you just can't, you don't have the capacity to keep them anymore, but I don't want to chop it up because I love it the way that it is right now. So yeah, I'm struggling a little bit with that fact. But yeah, my philodendron squamiferum is gorgeous. I currently have it sitting next to an east facing window and it absolutely loves it. It loves that morning light and um, yeah, it's, it's thriving. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna leave it right here for now while I'm talking because actually that might not be a good idea. It's kind of like, I'm leaning in my space. If you're looking for a philodendron that will like size up its leaves very, very quickly, like this is literally not even on a moss pole. It's just a bamboo 
steak. This next one is also quite large. Okay. This is a philodendron green Congo and it's a fun one. It's definitely like more basic, but I think it's super underrated. Like look at how beautiful and big these leaves are. Stunning. I would say the care is very much like a Monstera Deliciosa. Just kind of like put it in a relatively sunny spot and watch it grow. It is a little bit more of a slower grower, I think, but there is a new leaf coming right now. This plant is kind of fun because it's originally from my mother-in-law's plant. She has like a massive philodendron green congo that like had five plants in one pot that she bought years and years and years and years and years ago. I was helping her repot it and she was like, well, take a piece of it. And it's definitely like a little bit funky and very much splayed out. It's sculptural and I think that it's it's nice because it's not super attention grabbing, but it does take up like a nice corner, if that makes sense. It takes up a good amount of space, but like in a good way. And it's very low maintenance. I don't know that it's like my top, top, favorite philodendron or anything like that but i think it's a really solid solid plant that more people could definitely enjoy in their collections but it's just not really featured that much i don't think all right this next one is a plant that has given me some grief it's a philodendron pink princess and um it is definitely a variety of philodendron that gets those really caught leaves and it's frustrating to me because <laughs> The leaves won't size up for me. It's in my greenhouse cabinet, so it's getting plenty of humidity. But yeah, the leaves won't size up and um, the leaves get caught and they rip and it's just, it, it gets really annoying. And of course the variegation is kind of hit or miss. Like this leaf, oh my gosh, that's awesome. But like the leaves preceding it, uh, iffy. Although, yeah, I have propagated this plant a ton. I, I have so many propagations of this plant, holy moly. And they look really, really nice. This plant thrives in my prop box when I'm like actually propagating it and the new leaves that come out, like it grows so quickly and in the 100% humidity and like in a south facing window, Mwah. It, it does so well. Maybe I just need to like stick this in my prop box permanently because like that's where it wants to be apparently because as soon as I remove it from the prop box, even putting it in the greenhouse cabinet, which has more like 70% humidity, it just doesn't, it doesn't thrive as well. So I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't like given up on this plant, but it has been a source of frustration. And I think that's a really common thing. The mother plant that I have this, this is not like my original mother plant. Uh, I actually put like three propagations in a single pot with this wooden plank thing. Yeah, the mother plant, the leaves never really sized up with this. The leaves are still not sizing up. The variegation has been, like I've had, again, like several leaves and some of my propagations, some of those leaves that have come out are, have been so just delicious, just beautiful. But it is pretty hit or miss, you know? Like, if you just look at this plant, like, there's some pink on it. And it's, I'd say it's like better than average, maybe, or about average, but it's not anything crazy to look at. Thankfully, I actually did get this plant for free, but this is another one that a lot of people, I think, have dumped on and like have not enjoyed because it just hasn't lived up to the hype that it had such a long time ago. Similar to the Silver Sword, now that the price has plummeted on these guys and you can find them in big box stores, there are definitely some people that still seek after them and really like them, but you know, that's sort of like an old vestige. <laughs> Um, I think in the greater plant community, most people are just kind of over it. They're over the pink princess. I still will own one and I'll still enjoy them and whatever to the best of my ability, but... I, I've experienced that frustration as well with growing them. They just, they don't grow as nicely as I want them to, like when I actually put them in a pot. So I don't know, maybe I need to experiment with putting it in a plastic pot instead or try to make the conditions more like my prop boxes. Just let it live in my prop box. I don't know. But it's like, is that, I want to enjoy my plants. I don't want them to be like off in a corner in a box. So as far as like actually practically enjoying the pink princess, it hasn't really happened yet. The next plant is actually on my front porch. So I'm gonna have to go get that. And it's pouring rain right now. So of course it's gonna be, okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> I just grabbed this plant from outside. So it's looking a little bit crazy and I'm sure it has bugs on it and <laughs> all that. But this is, I typically call it my like upright lemon lime philodendron as opposed to the trailing lemon lime philodendron. I know there are like some other names 
for it that float around like golden goddess I think might be one of them but as you can see I'm not really growing it as an upright philodendron <laughs> Although, like, I think it usually will, like, grow up like that and people will, like, stake it up and stuff as it gets longer. But this is definitely kind of a crazy plant and it grows a lot. It's fun because it has that, like, really bright neon color to it. It's got, like, these beautiful peachy petioles. I would say it's definitely not my favorite plant ever. I have an appreciation for it. I like it. It's fine but I put it outside over the summer because I don't wanna like deal with having it in my house. I kinda got it on a whim and it looked really, really nice at the nursery and I haven't bought a plant in months at that point in time. This might be a plant that if it continues to not really spark joy, I might give it away. I, I don't know, I go back and forth with how I feel about it because looking at it, it's like there are some features to it that I really, really like, but other features about it that I'm like, this right here is my philodendron anabapoens, which <laughs> this plant I think would normally be in one of my top plants, like my one of my top philodendrons out there. Like I love that like the backs of the leaves are very purpley and burgundy. I love the, the shape of the leaves and like the feel of it. I just, from the time that I first saw Becca with her philodendron anabapoens, you know, Becca de la Plants, um, I fell in love and I really wanted one of my own and I eventually got one of my own. And it it was a really great plant, but it grew to the top of its pole. Maybe I'll like show footage of what it used to look like. I loved it, but I just decided to chop it up because you know, you, you eventually come to a crossroads where you have to decide, am I gonna keep this plant the way that it is or am I gonna chop it up? And I decided to chop it up, which is fine. I don't think that I regret that decision, but not all of the cuttings made it. And I, I mean, I used some for like trading to other people. And there are a couple that I'm going to end up selling, I think. This is the one that I've kept for myself. And this is like a mid cut, so it's definitely the growth that's come off of it is very juvenile by comparison to like what it used to be and I delayed potting this up so in an ideal world as soon as it had new growth I would have put it on a moss pole and then like I think the leaves would have matured a lot faster but all these leaves just kind of grew without any sort of support and I think that contributed to them remaining pretty juvenile which is fine but it's like it's not the way that I would want it to grow i feel like because now it's like i've wasted this much space with it being a more juvenile plant in an ideal world it would look more like the painted lady where like the internodal spacing is like tighter and you know it, there's just more opportunity for the leaves to size up as it grows whereas this the internodal spacing is just much farther apart and just the growth pattern is a little bit different and the leaves aren't sizing up really so We'll see how this goes. I might end up actually like chopping and propping it again to try to like be on it quicker. I know the potential of this plant and I will keep at it until I get to the place where I want it to be. But generally speaking, I really, really enjoy the philodendron Adabapoens. In theory, at least, it's one of my favorite philodendron that exists. I don't fully know why. There's just something about this plant that really hits me in the heart. Okay, this next plant, okay, I haven't talked about it on my channel yet because I was so disappointed, but about two months ago, I went on vacation in Florida. I had some friends like house sitting, I, they would come by to feed the cats, that sort of thing. And one of them, unbeknownst to me, knocked down one of my plants and it, you know, the pot that it was in broke and they hastily brought it downstairs. They repotted it into a new pot, but they did not water the plant after they repotted it. So when I got home, it it looked dead. And that plant is the variegated philodendron hydraceum. This is what I could salvage of the plant. So maybe I'll show some footage of what it used to be um, because it was like just starting to trail beyond the top of the pot. I received it as propagations from a friend. So I really grew that thing from the beginning and it was just starting to like be where I wanted it to be. And I was getting so excited when I had that setback, but thankfully I was able to salvage some pieces of the plant. So, oh, I just watered it. So it's dripping everywhere. <laughs> I was able to salvage several pieces of the plant and kind of like re-root it so it's currently in sphagnum moss. So I am kind of starting over 
which is a bit of a bummer because it'll probably take about a year to get it back to the place where it was at before because that's about as long as it took originally to get it to where it was from cuttings but it's okay. <laughs> I expect this plant to be pretty easy and, and in my experience it has been pretty easy and you know it roots quite readily and the variegation is very subtle, very beautiful. I really love this plant, but it, it, it does make me a little bit discouraged and sad when stuff like that happens. Mistakes happen and it's okay. They tried their best to salvage the situation and I don't think that they realized like the value of this plant. They actually brought me a philodendron Brazil because they're like, here, I'm like replacing the plant that I broke. And I was like, thank you. I appreciate the thought, but that was not a philodendron Brazil, but it's okay. I mean, their heart was in the right place. It's gonna survive. It's gonna be fine. Plants are resilient. Oh my gosh, this pot is so heavy, but this is my philodendron summer glory, which, oh my goodness, it's absolutely stunning. I love this plant so much. This is a crawling philodendron. And for some people, this will almost have like a self-heading growth habit, but that's just because this is a hybrid. And so sometimes it's a little bit inconsistent depending on the plant that you have. Some people will get crawlers and some people will get plants that have more of a self-heading growth habit. This is a hybrid. If you, if you don't know, this is a hybrid between a philodendron gloriosum and just some general like random Macaulay's plant. These guys are everywhere now. I got one like almost immediately when it came out, but now like, these can be found in big box stores, which honestly is fantastic because it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. The leaves come out a more like pink color. As you can see right here is a new catafil where a new leaf will emerge and it will be kind of this like reddish color, then turn more like rose gold, then turn more greenish like this. And it's got these beautiful veins that resemble gloriosa like the mama yeah it's a crawler and sometimes people don't like crawlers that much because they take up so much space but they have my heart i don't think i can have too many of them in my collection but yeah i do like them a lot as for my experience with this plant honestly like i haven't had any negative experiences it's just kind of crawled along as expected this is like the oldest leaf that's dying off right now, but that's of course normal and to be expected. And look at that, the sun is kind of back. <sighs> oh my goodness, I've been talking for such a long time, but I swear we are nearing the end. We have six left, okay, we can do this. All right, the next three plants I'm gonna talk about, I got them all in the same order from Plant Haven Toronto, I believe. I think I got it for myself as like a Christmas present. So this is, we're approaching eight or nine months ago is when I got these plants. So this first one is my Philodendron Gigas. And wow, this is totally one of my favorite Philodendron. Absolutely. It's grown so nicely for me. I got it when it was just a tiny baby. Do you see these bottom leaves right here? Yeah, it had like three of those leaves when I first got it. It was tiny, tiny, tiny. I was so paranoid that it was not gonna do well, but you guys, look at these leaves. Look at how much it's sized up. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with the velvety sheen. I'm obsessed with the coloring of this plant. Like, look at that, and it's got a new leaf on the way right there, and I'm going to need to extend this moss pole, ladies and gentlemen, because yeah, it's, it's about that time. Like it's starting to reach the pole, so I'm gonna have to extend it very, very soon. Add more moss, add another one of these like plastic things and figure out a way to extend it. I'm probably gonna also remove this zip tie so that it can be kind of right up against the moss again, because right now, you know, it's not growing right up against the moss like the rest of the plant has been, which I think has contributed a lot to the leaves sizing up because wow, look at that. That is like the length of, almost the length of my hand right there, like beyond my palm. And especially when you compare it to like these tiny, tiny baby leaves down here, they're like not even the length of my index finger. Like, oh my gosh. But this plant has done so well on a moss pole. I swear if you don't have this plant on a moss pole, you must do that. I don't know how you can see that, but there are roots going absolutely crazy back here. And I'm obsessed with this like clear moss pole because it keeps the moss moist for much longer than, you know, previous moss poles that I've had. And you can see the roots growing into the pole. I love it. Wow. 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 
absolutely one of my favorite plants. And again, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I have it in my greenhouse cabinet in a very like prime position. I'm a little bit nervous for the day that I might have to remove it from the cabinet, but I will delay that as long as possible because it, it loves that high humidity. The next one is my Philodendron White Princess in this adorable little turtle pot. And this plant is fairly nice. So I also have it in my greenhouse cabinet. And I, I love that it has like pink on the edges of the petiole. Like that is a defining characteristic of the White Princess as opposed to the Philodendron White Wizard. The White Wizard also is like green and white and like has the same kind of growth pattern, but it does not have pink. Yeah, I, I like this plant. The leaves do have a tendency to get a bit stuck. And so I'm always like a little bit nervous, but you know, like this most recent leaf, does not have a lot of irrigation on it, but there have been some leaves that have some nice amount of irrigation. It's grown decently for me, but I think I made a mistake by not putting it on a moss pole. I mean, it's just on a chopstick right now. It could probably use some better support. So one of these days I will probably repot it and add a pole to it. The problem is I'm just nervous because it's already fairly kind of tall-ish. So once I add a pole, you know, say I add one that's like up here, it's just, it's not gonna mature like a plant. I'm like hesitant to put it on a pole, but then do I really want to propagate it and go through that whole hassle? I don't know if I have the energy for that, so we'll see. <laughs> As it is, it's a really beautiful plant. I think I expected to love it more than I do, but I still I still enjoy it. Like it's a good plant to have and I'm happy that it's in my collection. It's just, I think I expected to love it more than I do, unfortunately. This right here is my Philodendron Splendid. And this was actually a freebie plant that I got and I chopped it up and propagated it. And I have like multiple propagations of this plant, but this is like the plant that I potted up for myself. And this is a new leaf that's happening. It's got two growth points, I think. Um, and it's, you know, done quite well for the most part. Although I will say this is a new leaf right here. And I don't understand what's happening because this has never happened to me before with my, like any of my little splendid plants that I have. But I think it just kind of like ripped itself, unfortunately. So, yeah. This new sleeve is not looking so hot. I think it just got like caught and it's kind of sad. So I'm gonna have to help that out, but the leaf is gonna be like totally ripped. It happens, it's fine. This is not in my greenhouse cabinet. This is just an ambient humidity. But if that happens again, if it, you know, rips itself again, I might consider switching this plant into my greenhouse cabinet just because I want it to grow well. And it's not super mature yet. This plant though has been a really good grower. This is like probably one of my fastest growing philodendron, I think, in my collection because like I said, I've propagated it several times and all the propagations have grown super quickly. And this plant that I like have Pot it up. I mean, it, it's also grown super quickly to this point. So yeah, it's a beautiful plant. I really, really love it. I believe it's a hybrid between a varicosum and a Milanochrysum. And yeah, it's got these beautiful velvety leaves. I love it. And I'm really excited for it to size up for me because, you know, it hasn't really gotten to that point where it's really started sizing up. I do need to add more moss here as well because clearly it has outgrown where the moss is already. So, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. All right, the next plant, I have to go get it. This next plant is a Philodendron Mayowai. At least it was labeled as a Philodendron Mayowai, so I'm just kind of going with it. And also when I purchased this plant, it was already growing as a crawler. So I've just kind of continued growing it as a crawler, even though I don't think people typically grow Mayowais as a crawler. But I think that this is a really fun plant. The petioles of it are like really pinkish red and it has a new leaf coming as well as you can see. I got this I think four or five months ago at Pandy's and it's honestly grown really well. It's put out, I think since I've had it, it's put out these three leaves. So this one, this one, and now this one down here. Like the leaves are kind of palm-like. They have fronds. It reminds me a lot of a philodendron tortum. Of course, a philodendron tortum, like these little frond pieces are actually like much more delicate, much thinner. But like, I would say this is a pretty good dupe because this, I, how much was it? I feel like it was, it, it was maybe $15. I was not expecting it to be quite this gorgeous as it's matured. Like it's matured very quickly for me because like the newest leaf when I got it had, had been this leaf, I believe. Don't get me wrong, like this is nice, but like this, is nice. 
Now that I'm feeling it, I think that I'm gonna have to water this plant. This is another plant that I think is really underrated. Like I don't see a ton of people growing these. So, I mean, come on, like look at that. It matured to that so quickly for me. It's fantastic. Okay, this is the second to last plant and it's my little philodendron Camposportuanum. It's so cute. It resembles the micans a lot, I think, and it has like very slightly velvety leaves. But as it matures, I'm pretty sure the leaf shape will like change pretty dramatically and get like these little bunny ears. So we're really vouching for it to mature, but I may end up chopping this plant up and then kind of like putting it up a more proper moss pool situation. I got this plant from a plant trade. I actually traded a piece of my Autobapuense for this and a fern leaf cactus. And I just think it's adorable. It's super, super cute. Obviously like I haven't really grown it to like full maturation yet, but this is another one of those philodendron that I think is pretty underrated because at this point in time when it's more immature like it's it's cute but it's not like super super eye grabbing or anything like that but i think as it matures over time it gets really really fun especially if you can get several vines going up a moss pole or something like that oh my goodness and the leaves come in this really like deeper more reddish color that i also really love and it like keeps that color too just a little bit even though it gets more green so We'll see where this plant goes. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> I think I accidentally flipped. So I think that this was actually like the last philodendron I've added to my collection. And then this next plant that I'm going to talk about is the second to last. It's fine. I got them within like a month of each other. But this <laughs> is my philodendron Jose Buono. Although it's not, it doesn't really look like a Jose Buono because it doesn't really have irrigation. So this is like the newest leaf. Let's see, does it have anything? I don't. Okay, the newest leaf has like super, super subtle, tiny spots of irrigation, but I don't even think that they're going to show up on camera. Like every new leaf has had like a few tiny spots of irrigation that have faded into green. So like the leaf shape is still Jose Buono. I bought it as a Jose Buono, but like, I don't know if Jose Buono's technically revert, but let's just say that this batch of Jose Buono that I bought um, does not, it's not very variegated. And I purchased it like hoping that maybe it would like mature and eventually get some variegation going, but like it hasn't really. Just honestly, I'm not mad at it. I think it's still a really beautiful plant. It's been growing super, super well for me. And look, Look at this. Look at this nice juicy root in this pole. I'm obsessed with that. Not exactly, like it's not fulfilling my expectations necessarily, but I also purchased it knowing that it probably would not be like a show-stopping Jose Buono with really good variegation. So, you know, it is what it is, but I do still really like this plant. I think it's growing so, so beautifully. Hi, I'm butting in. Um, I filmed this video about four days ago as of right now. I just got back from my garden center and they had like a bunch of new plants in, so I wanted to check it out and I didn't film it. I kind of wish that I had, but I didn't film it because I had my kids with me and it just, I actually, as it is, I didn't really have enough time to really soak in all the new plants that they had, but they had this plant and it's a philodendron. So it's my 26th philodendron officially. Um, hi, <laughs> it's a philodendron varicosum. And it's absolutely stunning. I could not resist it. Like, come on. Are you kidding me? <sighs> and it has like the fuzzy petioles, of course. And the beautiful red backs. And I'm just... I'm obsessed with it. I don't know if it has a specific subspecies. I know varicosum is prone to like having all these different subspecies or cultivars and whatever. I... I and this just says varicosum, but it was $16.99 and I was not planning on buying a plant even this month, to be honest with you, but there was something within me that just, I just, I couldn't help myself. I also had Gloriosum for $16.99 that were like even bigger than this plant right here. And they had like Epipremnum amplissimum silver streak and I don't know, just a whole bunch of other plants. Uh, Syngonium windlandii, yeah. A lot of really good looking plants for incredible prices because the house plant bubble has popped. Yeah, I'm gonna have to monitor myself when I go back there because there were a lot of plants I was interested in, but I don't think I necessarily have room for all of them. But yeah, this one I thought I could make room for because 
That's beautiful. Here, let's look at it in light together. Like, are you actually joking? This was $17 for this plant. Like, uh, that's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I'll have to figure out how I want to grow it. Um, but that's freaking what? All right, back to the video. Wow. Oh my gosh. That was a marathon and I have so much footage. I'm going to have to cut that down so much. Like as of right now, like I've been filming for like an hour and a half. So woof. Even though these collection videos take a super long time to make, I really enjoy making them because there's something super satisfying about being able to like look back and see how my collection evolves over time. And obviously it's been like a year and a half since I made the last one. So I was definitely way overdue with making a new video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to leave a comment down below of what your favorite philodendron is. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe if you want to. And uh, yeah. I hope that you guys have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye!